What's up guys, Andrew here. It's been a while since I reviewed an Apple laptop, and there's no better way to start than the all-new Apple MacBook with Retina Display. This is the base model with the Core M5Y31 with 8GB of RAM and a 256GB PCIe SSD. This model will set you back $1299 US. So let's see if this model is worth picking up. The new MacBook features a stunning design. You get an all aluminum body just like the other Macs. However, the footprint of this Mac is tiny. The weight is just over 2 pounds and its thickest point is 0.52 inches. This is one fine looking ultra portable. You also get the choice of three color options. You get gold, traditional silver, and the space gray which we have here. Just for a size comparison, let's compare the 2015 MacBook with the 2014 MacBook Pro 15 inch. I personally use the 15 inch MacBook Pro and the new MacBook makes it look huge by comparison. Now the biggest problem we have with the new MacBook is obviously the one port. This is the all new USB Type-C port. With the new USB Type-C port, you're going to be able to use this port to charge, output video, and connect your USB devices. On the right side, you got your headset microphone jack combo and your dual microphones. Now Apple does sell adapters starting at $19 for the USB to USB Type-C and a 3-in-1 adapter that retails for $79 which features an HDMI out, a USB Type-C, and a USB 3.0 port. I was getting frustrated at keeping all these dongles and adapters to switch out my devices, which is freaking annoying. I just wish Apple gave us two USB Type-C connectors, that would have at least eased my frustration. The biggest downside to the new USB Type-C charging port is the loss of MagSafe. MagSafe was a neat little feature found on all laptops prior to the new MacBook. The 29 watt AC adapter is very small and compact, it's slightly bigger than an iPad Air charger. Now keep in mind the new MacBook can also be recharged with many portable chargers that are used for phones and tablets. The keyboard has been engineered from the ground up for the new MacBook. Apple is able to squeeze a full size keyboard into this little frame. The keys are all new, instead of traditional scissor keys found on most notebooks today, Apple chose to go with the new Apple designed butterfly mechanism keyboard. Now I'm going to be honest with you, the first time I used this keyboard I was like wow, these keys are short and it just feels weird. However, after using it for 3 days now, I actually like this keyboard. Yes, the key travel is short, but the keys register clicks without any hard pressure needed. You also get a backlit keyboard on the new MacBook. Each key is individually lit and they are easy to read and easy on your eyes. Next up is the Force Touch trackpad, which is made out of glass and it just feels great. The tracking is excellent. Two finger scrolls and multi-touch gestures were smooth like butter. There are four sensors on the bottom to measure how much pressure is being applied. For example, if you're watching a movie, you can press down harder to fast forward faster or press down lighter to go slower. Now the new trackpad can also play with your mind a little bit. Unlike past MacBooks, you were able to press down and hear a click, but this trackpad uses a taptic engine to mimic a click. What's up guys, Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new MacBook 2015, which is a 480p camera. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And here's a comparison with the 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina, which is an HD webcam. Is there a big difference or not really? Let me know what you guys think. Let's talk about this beautiful 12 inch Retina display. The resolution is 2304 by 1440, which gives you a pixel density of 226 pixels per inch. Text and images look gorgeous on this panel. The RGB coverage came in at 100% and the Adobe RGB came in at 78%. These are some spectacular scores for this panel. The brightness levels and contrast ratios are also excellent. Overall, this is one of the best panels I have tested thus far. There are four resolutions to choose from. The first one we have here is 1024 by 640, followed by 1152 by 720. Next up is 1280 by 800. And our last one is 1440 by 900. Since this is an IPS display, you're going to get excellent viewing angles unlike the MacBook Air which is based off a TN panel. And just like the MacBook Pro line of laptops, Apple uses a special type of coating on this panel that helps reduce glare tremendously. When you compare this glossy panel to most of its Windows counterparts, the MacBook is less reflective. Next up, let's take a look at the performance from the new Broadwell Intel Core M5Y31. This processor is clocked at 1.1 GHz, but can turbo boost up to 2.4 GHz. The performance is good for basic to medium productivity, like web browsing, Netflix, office applications, to even light video editing. Now don't plan on editing 4K video on Final Cut Pro or iMovie as you will be disappointed. With that being said, 4K video playback was completely playable on this laptop, which was surprising. Now for the Geekbench 3 performance score, this is the 64-bit version, I got just over 2500 and for the multi-core performance came in at 4645. 
followed by Cinebench R15 for the CPU score I got 210 CB. The base configuration features a 256GB PCIe SSD that is wicked fast. It may not be fast like the 13 inch Retina Mac, but the overall response from this drive is very quick. During my Blackmagic speed test, I averaged around 465MB a second for the write speed and 775MB a second for the read speeds. The Core M5Y31 also features the new Intel HD Graphics 5300. With this graphics card, you can expect to play light duty games like Minecraft, League of Legends, and even some action games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And here's a quick demo of it running at 1440x900. So far as you can see here, the game is running at a playable frame rate without any noticeable lag. However, I did notice some screen tearing on some scenes during the game. Let me go and see who's over here. Oh man, yeah, you better double team me. Now after my 30 minute session of Global Offensive, here are the temperatures on the bottom panel. As you can see here, the temperatures are pretty good for a fanless laptop. The hottest temperatures are going to be at around the bottom panel, which is around 44 to 45 degrees Celsius. And the back section of the top side of the laptop averaged around 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. So how are the CPU temperatures on this fanless laptop? During my 30 minute online session with Counter-Strike, the average CPU temperature was around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, which is very good for a fanless notebook. Now with casual usage, the CPU will average around 47 to 52 degrees Celsius. Again, you can thank Apple and Intel for these amazing results. The new MacBook features a top row of speakers. There are four drivers to be exact, and the sound from these little drivers sound great. I've been highly impressed with the overall sound quality. Kudos to Apple for providing such good sound in such a small package. Now let's test out these speakers and see how well they sound. I'm going to start off at 50% and go up from there. Battery performance has been excellent. I've been able to get around 8 hours out of full charge with screen brightness set at around 50%. And that was with casual web browsing, mixed video streaming, email, and word processing. So let's get to the conclusion of this new MacBook. With a starting price of $12.99, you're going to pay a premium for this notebook. But if you're in the market for a super thin and light sexy laptop for web browsing, Netflix, social media, and even some light photo and light video editing, then the MacBook is a good choice. However, there is no rush to run out and get this model. I would recommend waiting until next year for the second generation MacBook, which will most likely add a second USB Type-C port, a faster processor, and maybe an HD webcam. And who knows, we might even get a price drop. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the new MacBook. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more reviews to come. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.